dear friends let me start wishing you a wonderful time in this 75th anniversary of indian independence we are very fortunate to be living to celebrate this it was this country which was the richest on earth planet it was this country one and only country which was selling diamonds pearls and gems in streets like vegetables it was this india which was controlling 25% of world economy till 16th century until britishers came and occupied us from this country more than 45 trillion dollars have been looted by britain they made us pulp today india is aiming to become 5 trillion 5 trillion economy 5 trillion dollar economy 45 trillion dollar assets have been looted several hundreds of years ago that will be how many thousands of trillions now such a great country which was beacon of light a country which has given vedas upanishads and bhagavad gita to the whole world while the rest of the world was not able to speak while living in caves today is considered developing nation what an unfortunate thing happened friends we have been robbed of everything money no problem we can always get it back but our psyche our identity and more than anything else our confidence has been robbed of from us no doubt we have progressed tremendously since during the last 75 years there is definite pride that we can declare with where was india a few years back though it was the world's greatest country it has been brought to not uh, almost and that has started restarted to bounce back in 1947 we were a country which was less than 2 and half dollars today it is more than 2000 dollars per capita income no comparison we were 12% literacy rate today more than 78% once it was the educational hub for the whole world has been brought into 12% but now we are bouncing back with just 20 universities to start with today we are more than 1000 with just 30 plus engineering colleges we are 100 times more today with just less than 2 crores of annual budget 2 crores of annual budget for the whole country's education today we are more than 1 lakh crores with just 32 years of life span in 1947 for average indian today we are more than 70 years thanks to the medicare the list goes on like that we were considered very poor but today we are world's fifth rated economy we were 34 crores when we got independence today we are more than 134 crores population what a change but then friends with this 134 crores of population what we shall do we have developed tremendously no doubt no one can deny but our development is not enough that is why we are together today we should have developed much much faster than otherwise countries like south korea israel even singapore which got independence much later are much superior to us far ahead of us why because of certain drawbacks let me touch the very basic drawback we started with friends very basic it was the genesis i would say friends all of you be with me let us be sensible we will not be any people of bias we will not think anything illogically just logically practically sensibly let us do, look at the past suppose somebody comes to your house or makes a riot to your house and occupies throws you out he or she bosses over your house occupies it makes you a slave wants you to pay rent if you want to stay there what do you do well friends i am throwing a challenge for this to answer honestly is there anyone who is just listening to me would say that sir i would sit in front of my house and protest leave my house please vacate my house i want my house back would anybody do that maybe you do it 
at the first stage to start with, but they don't listen to you. They started looting the entire thing in the house, ransacking the house. Then what do you do? You keep on protesting with placards and even if they hit you, kick you, you keep quiet. No, none of you will do that. We will never ever do that. We will fight to the finish. It is my house. How dare you come and then dictate terms to me? Don't you say? Don't I say? Who would say that he would not say? But what has happened to this country? What has happened? Friends, when I say that you would fight to your finish to take back your house, it is because of the ethos that is there in your blood. We are the country which got Bhagavad Gita. What Bhagavan Krishna said, the very discourse of Bhagavad Gita was to rather awaken Arjuna to take bow and arrow and then fight Adharma and finish that. Not to just compromise, not to sit and protest, not to keep quiet, not to be muted. Please have a look at this picture and see, try to recognize this picture. Whose picture is this? Difficult to find out unless I show the improvement, completion. I complete Rama, the picture. Rama. Yes, now everyone Rama. can say Rama. What made you say with confidence that 100% this is the picture of Rama? It's because he is now full with his bow and arrow armory. You cannot separate Rama from his weapons. Do you mean to say that Rama is violent man? Definitely not. Rama is never violent. Rama always followed Ahimsa. Rama always followed non-violence until the last. But when it doesn't work, he had to resort to violence. Our ancestors have said, Ahimsa Paramo Dharma. Ahimsa is ultimate Dharma. Yes, no doubt about it. If somebody occupies your house and then ransacking, you need to do something for it. Yes, Ahimsa Paramo Dharma. Non-violence is ultimate Dharma. But if it doesn't work, the person is not listening. You should not stop. It is an insult to our Indianness. It is an insult to our tradition, our ancient living. The second half of this saying has to be implemented. Dharma himsa tataivacha. Violence to protect Dharma is equally sacred. Not only non-violence is sacred to protect Dharma, violence is equally sacred to protect Dharma. Dharma rakshati rakshata, it is said. You protect dharma, dharma will protect you. That is the reason why Rama held the bow and arrow and finished adharma in the name of Ravana. He did not go and sit in front of Lanka palace and then protest with slogans, please release my wife, I would like to take it off. He did not stay there for days and days and months and years pleading to give back his princess. What is this? He just sent message for peace, but he didn't listen, Ravana. Then he had to go to the next step, punish. That is what had to happen. You take Buddhists. No Buddhist will plead himsa. They always live for ahimsa, non-violence. Buddhism is for non-violence. But nobody is qualified to become a Buddhist monk without mastering a martial art. Very surprising. You must master a martial art to be qualified to be a Buddhist monk. Why? Because it is not to attack others. It is to protect dharma. If you can't protect dharma, you cannot practice dharma. That is the reason why in 1998, India has become nuclear power. It is not to bomb foreigners. It is not to bomb our enemies and neighbors. It is to protect us from their bombing on us. That is the reason why Rama is role model. Though he has tied to his body the weapons, not to punish dharma, but to punish adharma. This is what is the psyche of India. For generations, this was followed. But unfortunately, this was not followed in our freedom struggle. Netaji Bose has appealed to Mahatma Ji. Mahatma Ji, this is not the way that we shall fight for our independence. We shall fight to the finish. We shall teach the lesson, tit for tat. That is the only way we can give the lesson to the enemy. 
but unfortunately mahatma ji chose a tougher job i want to eat like this but you want me to eat like this which is tougher though it is tougher though it is possible with difficulty why should i go to that when it is possible to eat please watch gandhi movie taken by richard attenborough a british filmmaker there you will clearly understand how difficult it is to fight with non violence mahatma gandhi had a one point agenda to bring independence to india hats off no doubt about it but the path chosen was toughest one you want to run or you want to run with so many hurdles which it is easier for you to go you create hurdles and then go this non violence path has made us lose our identity lose ethos lose our confidence lose the psyche and netaji bos warned him long back that time itself mahatma ji if we go for civil disobedience non cooperation movements after independence people continue to do that that is what is happening today no respect for rules no respect for orders regulations there is no u turn but you look this way that way there is no police constable you take a u turn even if it is there you take a u turn if he catches you throw some money bribe and then get up no respect for country's law this is because we started showing disrespect we started being keeping quiet there is one great danger netaji bos has warned i'm i'm quoting netaji again and again because what a prophet he was to say whole country will become passive he warned today we have become passive so many things are happening we are we are mute spectators watching tv and seeing social media and then keeping quiet what an unfortunate thing happened this is because of this tolerance there is a limit for tolerance ati sarvatra varjay anything too much should be, should be discarded we were too tolerant too tolerant and they have butchered us looted us robbed us made us a pulp and threw this independence on us <laughs> friends you will be shocked to know if you don't know in 1947 when we got independence the then prime minister of britain was asked who is responsible for independence who brought independence the reply of the british prime minister not the reply of me or you or anybody i am saying the reply of british prime minister atli was it was netaji subhash chandra bose because of him we gave independence because they were scared man who started with one man army formed azad hind fauj and then occupied burma and he was searching towards defeating the british the so called undefeatable british towards the mainland and he landed in andamans he was crowned there by the japanese and others and he just flew to other countries to make a strategy to attack british and we lost him but one thing friends we fought for independence with non violence okay great it needs more tolerance more ability than fighting but what happened to our fighting for the enemies we fought on behalf of our enemy british sending lakhs of soldiers to fight and die we have sent my goodness what a shame you say you want to be fighting for for freedom with non violence but you want to send your people fellow indians to fight with violence for the sake of enemy this is what has happened it is not to criticize anybody no doubt mahatma gandhi has started with a noble mission but there is an admission that he should have gone for a better way easier way the whole world could have saluted us 
the whole country should have become full of patriotism if we had fought for independence. That is what we shall recognize, friends. So I would appeal to all Indians, though we got independence, it is not that only through non-violence. So many people have shut their lives while fighting through non-violence. You just go to Andamans. I saw their uh, sound and light uh, exhibition exhibition in the prison where Veer Savarkar and others were tortured. If you don't cry, I bet any Indian would cry. That way they have tortured us. They were all fighting with non-violence only. So those who fought through non-violence also suffered, sacrificed their lives. And those who fought the war with weapons, countless number of people, the history doesn't uh, say, that is the kind of one-sided thing. We always read about those Mughal empires, those uh, 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 other empire, uh, empires, which are useless for us, rulers who looted our country and brought to this level. Why should we read about them, read about our patriots, our children, our forefathers, our ancestors, real enthusiasm to do well in life? This is what is needed, my dear friends. Now, the relevance of this topic, patriot or pat riot, my goodness. When you split the word, what is happening is seen. What is happening is seen, riots. Have you seen in any country, now we have social media, what is happening everywhere you are aware? Is there any country where people go on strike, dharnas or agitation? That is a right, democratic right. Everyone should support that. If you don't agree with anything, you can have every right to show, go on dharna, agitation, and then protest, no doubt. But burning your own property, burning buses, destroying public property, and then setting trains on fire, stoning, pelting stones. My goodness, this can happen only in India. Why this? Because there is no patriotism. Sir, what are you talking? This wonderful day we are celebrating you say that we don't have patriotism. I would not say that it is zero, but it is unfortunately not 100%. I want two zeros, and before that one should be put 100% patriotic, we must become. And first we must stop this riot. Then we shall go to the second one, how to become patriots. So my sharing a few thoughts today will be first how can we curb this riot but you and i cannot curb it only governments can do that who are those governments who are elected by us and when we elect we must lay this condition i still remember some time back when there were uh, uh, the councillor elections in chennai i was taking care of my street through exnora one candidate came, several parties' candidates came seeking support. And uh, uh, I said, we all want the street development, this, 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 this. If you do it, give it in writing, we will support, irrespective of the party. Believe me, they gave it in writing, one particular candidate. And we supported. And he won. And he fulfilled most of the promises. That is what we shall demand. When we take money for voting, when people take liquor for voting, when people get swayed away by caste. Yesterday I saw a program, you vote, your, you cast your vote or vote your caste. What a shame. We have to cast our vote. Instead today, we are voting the caste. What a shame it is. We are, it is a biological happening. For example, I am J.N. Reddy. Reddy is a community name, maybe. What is there in that? It, it has nothing to do with the personality. 
it has nothing to do for you to like me or dislike me if i am good you like me if i am bad you dislike me that is how it should be what is the use of education if you take sides based on caste and community that should not happen so friends how to remove this riots let us see the first one the first and foremost one there is a saying yadha raja tada praja as the king so be the kingdom if the rulers are good the kingdom will be good if the rulers are bad the whole population will be bad they emulate them so friends charity should start at home with parliament what is happening in parliament you are seeing whether upper house or lower house is it ruling how unruly it is now it is shown live telecast still they don't bother some people were commenting because of showing live telecast they are behaving much worse very often they are getting suspended that is not enough there are placards tearing the ordinances rushing to the well absolutely undemocratic objectionable they can always protest how it used to be in 50s and 60s until emergency time how it was it used to be very democratically just protesting instead disturbing not allowing the proceedings to go they should not be suspended they should be dismissed disqualified for the future also irrespective of the party you did this yesterday i do this today no whoever did it past past is past from today every party should comply to that every mp should comply to this if he goes beyond the limits crosses the lakshman rekha he should be disqualified for life period and he should be made to repay the money that government has spent on him in electing him he should be made to get disqualified to get any provisions any facilities come to assemblies it has become much worse here there are many assemblies we have seen people going into blows physical blows physical assault nonsensical things have seen in the assembly those people should be again disqualified for life period and all privileges should be cut off they should not have an opportunity to contest in the future not only that they should not get either government job or a private job this is the one and only way the parliament and assemblies will become very orderly then it will inspire public people will get inspired there are so many parliamentarians though, there are so many legislatures who are very orderly even today but they are losing their heart they are not able to voice their opinions because of this chaos commotion and riot well friends next one very important thing public you and i if you and i resort to this unruly things in the name of protest in the name of strike in the name of dharna destroy or destruct public property we shall be made to pay for the compensation which up uttar pradesh government has just initiated hats off every state government central government must implement this process whoever is found guilty should be made to pay for it number 1 number 2 disqualified to get voting number 3 shall not have any privileges including getting a government job and a private job yes this is just possible for the rulers to implement then see what will happen in just one or two years would the country not be orderly definitely we become very orderly the word right will be written up from that it will become right it will not be pat right pat right it will become that is one and only way this country has to progress every one of us should plead for it how can we bring legislation by just sharing with social media with the people concerned while sharing in a talk like this 
it will slowly reach the powers that be and the day will come when they come asking for votes in few months or years time from now we demand we command them we remand them to do it that is the way we shall proceed well friends let me take you to the next one that is this how to change our mindset how to become patriots is it possible to arouse patriotism that is what i want to concentrate on today's talk as i said we talked about the past such a glorious past we had today we are struggling to reach somewhere near that renaissance bouncing back to past glory but we are with very passive nature whatever be the reason we just discussed tomorrow that is in the future in the next 25 years when we celebrate centenary i am sure if only we fought for our independence as netaji bos bhagat singh and the great leaders like that advocated today we must have been celebrating centenary of indian indian independence but it got delayed doesn't matter not denying but in the next 25 years we shall not be in this stage much 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 better tremendous growth unbelievable growth india is progressing towards we are very proud to say that but that is not enough what to do first and foremost thing that i would like to appeal to all my friends to arouse patriotism first thing that we shall start from lkg not first standard from lkg ukg rather even pre kg we shall start that one that is with sense of belonging the sense of belonging should be there i don't care i don't bother for what is happening i must be safe that's it that is the attitude of the people today we shall have the sense of belonging when do we do this where do we learn this let me share a few things my dear friends very interesting more than interesting i open one gentleman who visited japan some time back was narrating i was so taken by that he was traveling by an electric train local train and the opposite to his seat there was an elderly person sitting and traveling and he saw something very interesting to look at this elderly man took out a needle he was having it in his suit took out a needle and then thread and he started repairing the seat there was a torn it seems and he saw that and he started repair stitching it he thought he may be some uh, seat repairer he may be doing that he finished the job next station came the train stopped and this man that elderly man alighted this indian also got down there he had to uh, get down there in that station only it seems when he got down he was stunned to see that there were so many big bigs lining up to receive him he came to know from the crowd there that he was a big industrialist he could not contain himself he just picked up some conversation while traveling with that uh, proximity he went near him and asked it seems sir i saw you repairing this seat but i understand that you are a big industrialist why did you do this it's not your own train it's a public train not private one the answer the elderly man gave is an eye opener to all indians he said who said it is not my own it is my country my property my own train and i have seen it torn should i not have i happen to carry a needle and thread should i not do this for my country what is wrong in doing that i shall not wait for a repairer to come and do that had sought to their side then he was there staying for a week in that country it seems 
He was just visiting several offices for some official purpose. Everywhere, several story, multi-story buildings are there, and he had to go by lift. At every lift, there was a lift operator, decently dressed, inviting with a pleasant smile in the morning, and wishing a great day. And in the evening, when people get out of the office, their work, inviting them again with a pleasant smile and thanking. He was becoming very curious day in and day out. Towards the end of his stay, one day, he could not contain himself any further. He asked one, wait, the lift operator. That lift operator said with a smiling face, sir, when my country is being served by these people from morning to evening, they are coming to work. Should I not invite them with a pleasant smile and wish them very best because they are rendering service to my nation? Wow. Then how about evening? They have done their best. They have given their best for the whole day. They are going home to take rest. Should I not thank them for their sacrifice? Should I not wish them with a pleasant smile? My goodness. Come back to India. I have seen not to criticize my, my own country here, not to wash the dirty linen in public. But you see in many, many places, lift operators sit comfortably on a, a stool, not bothered for the passengers or the travelers, even if there is a old person who is not able to stand, doesn't offer a seat. Very rarely we see offering. This is lack of sense of belonging. When there is lack of sense of belonging, definitely things happen like this. In Japan, if they want to protest, if they want to go on strike, difficult to believe they work one hour more. Not like us. We cut the office, we break things, and we bunk the duty, and then go on strike. There, they work one hour extra. When do we get this culture? That is the reason why though the country was bombed and made to just nothing, today, it is one of the most developed nations in the whole world. It is an inspiration to get. So friends, we shall have sense of belonging. It is my nation. It is my duty to do something to my country. I shall not look for Jesus Christ to come and shed blood for me. I must become Jesus Christ to shed blood for others. That should be the attitude. Everyone should take the lead to do something to the society. And that can happen only through sense of belonging. So every day, we shall do something, whatever way possible, to our nation, to our people. This is the first requirement. The second one, friends. The second one is a national shame, I would say. What is the second one? It's a national shame. Swach Bharat. Sir, what are you talking? Yes. I would consider this a national shame. Asking people to be clean. Is it not an insult to me that you have to tell me that I shall be clean? Is it not an insult to me that I have to behave properly? Is it not an insult to me that I have to be a good person? I must be by nature good. By nature I shall be clean, hygienic. But what is happening in this country? Throwing litter on the road, spitting on the road, not bothered. Then should we leave it like that? No. When you are not taking the lead, somebody should take the lead and lead you to follow the rule. That is what is Swachh Bharat. Inevitably it was brought out. Though it was unfortunate thing, it is most necessary thing. In my lifetime, I have seen two mass movements, mass movements in this country. First one when I was an university student. 
protesting against emergency. When I was a university student those days, I even quoted arrest those days I protesting against emergency. It was a mass movement from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. Second mass movement I have seen is Swachh Bharat. What a tremendous change we have seen. Though it is unfortunate that you have to be told, but there is no other way you have to be told. Now, unfortunately, this is sliding down. The tempo is not as it was when it was started. There is a big change, no doubt, but the change should be constant. The, the tempo should not go down. For example, I take one or two examples to share with you. One day, I saw a group of youngsters sitting in the middle of the road and then chatting, chewing pan. And the uh, person appearing to be a leader spitted on the road, on the middle of the road. I saw some 50, 100 meters away uh, from that. My blood boiled. I felt very bad the way they are doing, most of youngsters. I wanted to tell them, but it is, pos is it possible to educate him? They look like ruffians. They say, get lost. Who are you to ask? We have every right. No independence, no freedom in them. The so-called freedom. Then I thought, I will play the psychology aspect. So I just clapped and then they looked at me. I just called that leader looking person. He just got stunned and stared at me. I just called him, just said like this. And he came towards me. And I whispered something into his ears for one or two minutes. You believe me, he shouted from that place to his crew. Come on, come on, get clear. Don't be there. Don't spit there. Sorry, sir. Sorry, sir. He said and then left. You may be wondering, sir, what did you do to him? I said, first, I started with the positive view. See, my dear young man, you seem to be educated, maybe. You seem to be decent, could be. You, see, you seem to be having leadership qualities, might be. If you spit on the road, your followers also follow the same thing. They bring bad name to you. Should you not educate them? Should you not do good things so that they will follow you right things and they get good name to you? You become a good leader. This is what I just said. And he was very excited to listen to that because I, I said leader. This is a positive way. When we visit temples, you see what happens in front of temples. Scattered footwear. When I go to visit a temple, I just leave my footwear properly, orderly, and surrounding my footwear, this side, this side, two, three pairs, I just put them orderly with my feet. Just for a minute, that's it. Two, three pairs of other footwear, I arrange. I leave. When people come out, when they look at that place of footwear, it looks like island. This orderly arranged footwear look like island amidst the scattered footwear. Then they are made to think it is not that they deliberately do it. There are two types of people, ignorant people. We can educate like this. There are other types hard not to crack, ignoring people. With them only, we need to really work more. So many people who are ignorant, once you educate them in a proper way, yes, they do change. If I see any road repair laying a tar and burning tires to melt tar, I just go near the workers and I ask, are you married? Yes, sir. Do you have children? Yes, sir. Don't you have any interest in your family and welfare of your children? Sir, why, why, what are you asking? See, this is the one what you are doing. It will emanate poisonous gas mean. You are going to die fast soon. You get a lot of diseases if you breathe this, this uh, smoke. And these people, contractors, want to make money by selling the firewood allotted to them. And they want to play with your lives. Should you become scapegoats? 
they get stunned. They may not stop, but they think twice before they do it. There are several such occasions. If an electrician comes to my house to do repair, I will ask him, why don't you wear gloves to safeguard your family? If a painter comes, I say, why don't you wear glasses? You have only one pair of eyes. Should you not take care of them? This kind of just free service can make a lot of difference. Swachh Bharat should be there in our blood, right from the toilet to our home, everywhere, including our heart, must be swatch. This is the second requirement we shall have to arouse patriots. The third one, the third one that we need to have is read biographies of great sacrifices. There are so many sacrifices we come to know but children do not know. You need to narrate their stories. We need to read or make them read. More so at bedtime. See, it will have great impact. Why this Hargar Teranga? Is it not waste of money? Lot of money is wasted, you know. So many meters I have seen yesterday. Three kilometers long, the flag is made and people are doing procession. How much of money is wasted if anybody thinks that he is a fool? Because this is how to arouse sense of patriotism, sense of belonging. We must have that sense. So read biographies and that can make a lot of difference. The next one is very, very necessary. In India, every Indian must have a wake-up call for this. What is this? It is said one Indian is superior to two Japanese. Excellent. But they did not stop with that. They completed the sentence. Two Indians are inferior to one Japanese. Come on. What is it? One Indian is superior to two Japanese. But two Indians are inferior to one Japanese. Why? Because if two Indians are there, they are busy pulling each other's legs. That is treachery. We shall not do that. We shall help each other. Only when we help each other, we can arouse patriots. Let me recall wonderful saying from G.B. Shah. He said, I have an apple, you have an apple. We exchange. Again, I will have one apple, you will also have one apple. That's it. But I have an idea, you have an idea. We exchange. Now, I have two ideas, you have two ideas. What a wonderful way to grow. If I help, you get the... If I help, you get that help. And if you help, I get that help. Suppose you are a very scholarly person. You help a person who is not well aware of things. In a class, for example, a brilliant student is well aware of the subject. He helps a student who is a dullard, not so good in the studies. He helps. The student who gets the help is a beneficiary. But the one who helps that brilliant student, is he a beneficiary? Of course, he is a greater beneficiary. How? Only when you teach, you get reinforced, reiterated, and reaffirmed, you become confident of the subject. As a teacher, I say this, only when you become a teacher, you'll be strong in the concepts. So that brilliant student got a wonderful opportunity, thanks to the dull student, to teach him. And through that, he becomes stronger in his subject. Is it not a wonderful service done by that student to this student? If only he is not there, how can he teach? So friends, we can help each other. Everyone can benefit from others' help. This is what is needed in India. That should be the basic requirement that we shall implement. But for this, there is a big stumbling block. Fifth one is a big stumbling block. The fifth point is the real killer of the fourth one. What is the fifth one? Number one syndrome. 
what is number one syndrome i want to be the best i want to be a number one in my office i want to be a number one in my sports i want to be a number one in my profession i want to be a number one in everything this want to be a number one is the killer of progress never ever aim to be the best my dear friends it may be shocking to some people who are listening to me for the first time i have been advocating things for decades the same thing those people who know it reinforce reiterated further that never ever aim to be the best it will lead to lots of problems you never aim to be number one a student studying in the class should never aim to be number one in the class number one in the school or college number one in the state number one in the country it is not good why however brilliant you may be if there are better students in the class you can never become number one however dullard you may be in the class if other students are much worse than you you can still become number one therefore you are becoming a number one does not depend on you it depends on others performance that is why we shall not aim for number one because i cannot have control over your performance seldom do we have control over ourselves how can i control your performance that is the negative way of approach then what is positive instead of aiming for the best aiming for your best whole scenario changes there will be a paradigm shift in your approach if a student is aiming to get first rank say he is scoring 10th rank next time 9th rank say 8th rank 7th rank like that second rank first rank no if he is scoring 70% he should aim for 75% next time next test 80 next test 90 95 who is his competitor himself what he performed yesterday is competition today and tomorrow this will be competition for him so he is competing with himself when you compete with others there is a pressure when you compete with yourself there is pleasure that will not be work at all that work will not be work from morning to midnight even if you work you will enjoy that work so friends you should never aim to be number one aim to be your best that will take you step by step by step to higher levels one day you will become top 3 top 2 on the day will come definitely you will become number 1 but your aim is not number 1 so you will continue to become number 1 unlike the other case where after becoming number 1 he will become complacent he will be down the drain so friends all of us should not fall into the trap of this the best and number 1 i must do my best i must do better than what i have done yesterday this is not my advocacy this is not my philosophy this is not my wisdom this is the ancient wisdom of this land our ancestors have said there is nothing sacred about being superior to someone than to being superior to your own former self what you were yesterday than that if you are better today that is no plus superior than to become better than somebody so this is how the indian psych should change now friends let us go to the next one the next one is equally important but that is not in our hands next one alone i am going to talk about two more things and next one alone is not the one you and i can do but when government attempted to do there was hue and cry what is that that is making every youth compulsory to work for army we must be made to work compulsorily in army there are several countries in the world which make it compulsion they see the value recently when government has introduced agnipath but the way they introduced was not the way it should have been done they did not bring awareness made people know of the of the positive thing and without doing anything introduced and lots of problems have come but agnipath is a wonderful thing in fact it should not stop with that make to the entire youth compulsory and you get discipline 
and some people complained that they will not get jobs and all. Uh, patriotic uh, industrialists like Anand Mahindra came out saying that we will absorb them first. Definitely anybody will take them first because they get more discipline. So this should be made compulsion. Everyone should work for the country, army. You and I lost this opportunity, golden opportunity. At least the youth should get that great pride to work for the Indian army. The seventh one, the seventh one is important. Japan is well ahead of us, though it is a tiny country, because of not upskilling ourselves. We shall upskill ourselves. This country does not have that. We have talent, no doubt. Suppose I ask you to touch the roof. The roof is 15 feet high. Can you touch it? No. Suppose I ask this table, which is more than one ton weight, can you lift it? No. But I provide you a ladder. Why 15 feet? Even 150 feet you can touch. If I provide a crane, why this one ton table? Two tons also you can just with push button lift it. That is upskilling with tools. The country needs to be upskilled. No doubt, NSDC, National Skills Development Corporation and State Skills Development Corporations have been formed recently in the few years, but they are basically for life skills. But edu skills, unfortunately, it is not there. Almost 29 years back, I thought it is necessary for the country. I was a doctorate in science and I was a professor of Loyola College, you know that. And I threw that to do something to this and upskill the youngsters especially in the education sector and got into this. Today, we showed to so many people, ordinary people to do extraordinary things, even set records, leave alone setting records. Everyone can be made to perform excellently. The first sentence that I wrote before starting this Max Academy was this sentence. Have a look at this sentence. Very few succeed by nature. True, very few, but everyone can excel through nurture. Nurturing is training. If you can train them, upskill them, you can see tremendous improvement through them. This is the country in the whole world having 25% of youth. 25% of youth are less than 25 years of age. Of the population, 25% are youth having less than 25 years of age, the only country in the world, it becomes a burden, one almost 140 crores of population, it becomes a burden if we are mediocre. But if we are upskilled, it becomes a very, very big human potential. This 140 crores of population becomes a big asset to the country and we can reach pinnacle of glory take this country again back to the great heights. Is it not, friends? When you upskill, things change. You take a seed, the seed remains as such if you don't upskill it. If you don't sow it, it don't sprout, it won't become a plant, it won't become a tree. If you just see a caterpillar, it remains as such if it doesn't grow, upskill itself to become a butterfly. If you just take a stone, it remains an unenchanting stone as such forever. No change. But if you upskill, a giant banyan tree is hidden in a tiny puny grain, you prove it. The most beautiful butterfly emerges from the least inspiring caterpillar. An enchanting statue is concealed in the lifeless rock. That is what we discover. So every one of us can discover great things by upskilling ourselves. When we upskill like that, anything that we do, we do with excellence. So my final point for the day is the crux of the thing. We started the academy, Max Academy for Excellence, and that is to work with excellence. We shall become patterns of excellence. 
this country is excellent with mediocre people should not be the statement this country is excellent with excellent people by upskilling by becoming evolved we should get resolved to do breathe excellence wherever we are friends whatever we do friends we must do every work even pasting of a label should do with excellence like ravi varma painted pictures like ravindranath tagore wrote poetry like ravi shankar played sitar our work should be so magnificent as magnificent as classic melody of kuku princely walk of peacock beautiful colors of butterfly friends that should be the way you and i live with excellence we must breathe excellence and from today we shall start that i would appeal to all of you not to consider august 15 and january 26 as holidays even if government declares them as holidays for you and i there should not be holidays watching tv and whiling away time and then wasting the valuable day then what we must update ourselves and help others spend some time to update yourself and spend some time to help others there is a great saying if i am not for myself who else is for me yes i must be my best well wisher if i am not for myself who else is for me it should not stop with that if i am only for myself then what am i for i must help myself to develop and i shall also help my fellow beings to develop this is what we can do not from next year why should we wait for one more year today we shall start today is not a holiday for us it's a working day with one hour at least extra working time work for yourself work for your family not to chat and then waste time to develop to arouse patriotism and help others and friends i am really delighted elated excited enthralled what not to share my thoughts with my fellow indians we shall live together to lift this country to great heights i wish you the very best may god bless all of us may god see make us take this country back to renaissance again to the ancient glory all the best my dear